Hi, I'm John Hornick. Welcome to Lesson 91 of Chef's Apprentice Learning to Cook Like a Pro, One Small Plate at a Time. This lesson is Butternut Squash and Duck Confit Tartine with Chef, Prosciutto, and Pine Nuts. In this lesson, you will make Duck Confit, which will be good practice for the ultimate challenge. I don't usually teach easy techniques for the sake of being easy, but my Duck Confit technique is easier than the traditional method, and I think it tastes just as good. You will also work with puff pastry, which has many cooking applications. The resulting tartine is not only tasty, but beautiful. I've rated this lesson as challenging, but now that you've cooked your way through 90 lessons, it should be a breeze. Note, I said at the end of the last lesson that this lesson would be uni or sea urchin tempura, but uni is just too hard to get in the U.S., especially right now, so I've substituted this lesson. Techniques today are making duck confit, cooking sous vide, slicing, roasting, sauteing, making a compound chef, rolling and working with puff, blind baking and baking, slicing and garnishing. So let's start cooking. Okay, let's talk about the ingredients that we need for lesson 91. We're gonna need a butternut squash. Now, I'm only going to use the neck portion of the butternut squash. And if you can find one with a narrower neck than this, that's even better, okay? So what we're gonna do is we're gonna cut off the neck we're going to peel it, split it down the middle, and take the seeds out, okay? And then have that ready when we start the lesson. We're also gonna to need to have one whole duck leg, okay? Now, there's two in this package, um, but I haven't taken them out of the package yet, but you only need one whole duck leg. You also need to have some duck fat. Now, there would have been some duck fat left over from one of the prior lessons, but in case you've used that all up, uh, you can buy duck fat. We're gonna need about one heaping tablespoon of duck fat, cold, we want it to be cold, because we're gonna put it into the vacuum bag with the duck and put that into the sous vide. And if it's, if you want it to be cold to start with, because if it's not cold, it's almost impossible to work with to get it into the bag properly. Okay, then uh, we're gonna need to have some olive oil. <clears throat> then we're gonna need to have some puff pastry. This is the Dufour brand of puff pastry. I've used it many times, I think it's a good brand. Uh, there are others out there. Uh, or you can make puff from scratch, okay? Uh, I, I may do, a, I may do a, uh, a bonus lesson on that at some point, but I haven't done it yet. Uh, you also need to have some flour to flour your work surface so you can roll out the puff. You'll need to have uh, three, uh, three uh, slices of prosciutto uh, that you have chopped up, chopped up, finely chopped up. And about one tablespoon of pine nuts that you have toasted, you can toast them in the oven or in a toaster oven, about one tablespoon. Then you'll need to have about four ounces of chev, and it can be either plain chev or herbed chev or garlic chev. This is, um, this is herbed chev, and but we're gonna add some additional fresh herbs to it. Uh, then you'll need to have about one teaspoon of fresh thyme leaves. Now, this is fresh thyme. I just cut it off the plant in the garden. I'm gonna take the leaves off, so you'll have about one teaspoon of these fresh leaves. And then you'll need to have about two teaspoons of freshly chopped parsley, and uh, some kosher salt, and a pepper mill for freshly ground black pepper. All right, that's all the ingredients. Right, come back, I'll show you the equipment for lesson 91. Okay, let's talk about equipment for lesson 91. We're gonna need our cutting board, chef's knife. You'll need a peeler to peel the butternut squash. Then we're gonna need to have a tart pan with a removable bottom, okay? This is probably about a 10 inch, 11 inch pan. Uh, so it can be, I'd say 10 to 12 inches, okay? And remember, it has to have a removable base. And you'll need to have a brush to brush that tart pan with uh, butter or olive oil. Then you'll need to have a sous vide device. Now, um, this is the sous vide device that uh, I've already used in another lesson. Uh, basically, it's a uh, Sancerre brand immersion circulator that I am just putting into a, uh, into a, a stock pot. And um, you'll also need to have uh, the vacuum bags. So they, they need to be of a size uh, large enough to hold your duck leg, you don't want it to be much larger, so you want to size it appropriately. We're going to cut off a bag that's about the right size, uh, and you'll also need to have the vacuum sealer, so you can seal the duck leg in the bag. Uh, we'll need to have a mandolin to slice the uh, butternut squash, a mixing bowl to toss the butternut squash in olive oil, salt, and pepper. We 
you have another mixing bowl so you can make the compound chev and a wooden spoon. Then you need to have a saute pan to uh, saute the prosciutto. I'm probably going to use this little wok, which I love. Uh, you also need to have a uh, sheet pan and some parchment paper. Enough parchment paper to line the sheet pan. You'll also need to have enough parchment paper to line your uh, tart pan. Okay. Then you'll need to have a rolling pin to roll out the puff pastry, which is often just referred to as puff, and a fork to prick the dough, which will allow air to escape as it's rising. And uh, then you'll need to either have pie weights. Now you can go out and you can buy pie weights. Uh, these are used in blind baking. And blind baking means that after we line this tart pan with um, puff pastry, we're going to bake it in the oven without any other filling in it. That's called blind baking, okay? And so what we're gonna do is we're gonna put the, the puff pastry that we roll out into this pan. We're gonna put a piece of parchment over the top of it. And then we're gonna put some kind of weights on top of that parchment. That keeps the puff pastry from puffing too much, okay? It keeps it from rising too much. So you can use pie weights or you can use dried beans. And that's what we're gonna use, dried beans, any kind of dried beans. Then you'll need to have a spreader to spread the chev into the, um, or onto uh, the uh, puff pastry after it's been baked. And then you'll need to have a pizza cutter to cut it for service at the end. Okay, that's all of the equipment we need. We'll break and come back and start cooking. One thing that I forgot to mention is that you should heat your sous vide device, fill up your pot and heat your sous vide device to 176 degrees Fahrenheit before we start the lesson, okay? I'm not gonna show you that as part of the lesson. You, should, you need to do that yourself, 176 degrees. Okay, first thing on our prep list is to season the duck leg, okay? So we're gonna take some salt and some freshly ground black pepper. and pat them in. Okay, then we're going to take our vacuum bag. I've already put about a heaping tablespoon of um, duck fat into this bag. And we're gonna put the duck leg into the bag. Now what you wanna do is take this to your vacuum sealer and seal it according to the directions of the vacuum sealer. Okay, here we have our um, sous vide set up. Uh, the water temperature is at 176 degrees. And uh, I have my, um, my vacuum bag with the duck leg in it. Uh, the, the fat is positioned nicely, uh, the duck fat is positioned nicely right over the, actually, the meat of the duck. Um, and now what we're gonna do is we're gonna submerge this into the water. We wanna make sure the duck leg is totally submerged leave that in there for eight to nine hours. Why eight to nine? Well, if you're busy at the eight hour mark, uh, then uh, leave, it a little, leave it in a little bit longer. But if uh, you're free to take it out around eight hours, you can take it out then. <clears throat> I'm putting it in at uh, 10 a.m. So I will be able to take it out um, at about 7 p.m., which will be around the time that we'll need to do the next steps to have the dish ready to eat around uh, 8 to 8.30. Okay, now we're gonna make the, uh, the compound chev. And you could make this right after you put the uh, duck into the sous vide device, or you could make it while the uh, butternut squash is roasting or while the, um, uh, while the puff is blind baking. Uh, this um, is herb chev, right? So it already has some herbs on it. Um, I'm gonna add some more fresh herbs to it. If you're using the plain chef, then you're, you are adding the herbs yourself. Just added the thyme leaves. We're gonna add the uh, parsley. We're gonna add a little bit of salt, not a lot, a little bit of salt, and a little bit of freshly ground black pepper. And then we're going to mix that up. Now, this is a little cold because it's been in the fridge. I just took it out of the fridge. It would be easier if, I, uh, if you get it to room temperature first, okay?
Okay, now let's have a little taste. Hmm, good. Okay, now what you want to do is keep this cheese covered at room temperature until you're ready to spread it onto the puff. Okay, now this is what the squash looks like after it's been peeled. I just used the neck portion. Here's the uh, the base portion. Okay, we use that for some other purpose. So cut off the neck portion. I peeled it, and then I um, uh, cut it in half. Right, it would have been like this whole. Cut it in half. Now, if there had been any seeds in this part of it, we would have taken the seeds out too. But there were no seeds in this part. Now we're going to take our mandolin and we're going to slice this into about eighth inch slices. Let's see, we're going to try the first one. Yeah, that's about an eighth of an inch. I'm going to make it just a little bit thinner and we're going to do the whole, uh, both of these pieces of squash this way. Okay, good. Now we have nice half moon shaped pieces. I didn't go down to the very end because uh, it's it's safer that way. Less likelihood that you'll nick yourself on the mandolin if you uh, leave about, oh, three quarters of an inch of the squash uh, at the end. Okay. Okay, the next thing on our list is to toss these squash pieces in some salt and pepper and some olive oil. How much olive oil? Enough. Enough to give them a nice coating. Because these are going to go into the oven to get roasted, alright? So we want to make sure they all have some olive oil on them. Okay, let's heat our oven to 375 degrees. All right, now I have my sheet pan here that I've lined with some uh, parchment. And what we're going to do is we're going to lay out the um, uh, the slices of uh, butternut squash onto this parchment, and it's okay if they touch a little bit. So, what you may see, I'm going to do this in fast motion, but what you may see is uh, after I start to get them. Uh, most of them on here, if I don't have room, I will probably, uh, I may move them together a little bit closer or overlap them a little bit. Okay, the next thing on our list is to roast these slices of butternut squash. Uh, we already uh, started the oven and put it to 375 degrees. So we're going to roast these for about 30 minutes until they are tender. Okay, the next thing we want to do is to brush the uh, tart pan with olive oil, or you could use butter as well. You could use a butter wrapper, you know, that has some residual butter on it. Uh, they're great for that kind of thing, actually. Uh, but I'm just using uh, some olive oil and pastry brush. Okay, now we're going to roll out the puff. And, uh, you know, granite surface is a great place to do the puff for marble, uh, marble board, marble um, uh, board that you use uh, for baking. Uh, I'm going to do a light coating of. Um, flour on the counter here. I've already done that. A light coating on the uh, rolling pin. The rolling pin itself is marble actually. Now what we want to do is roll this out until we have something that's big enough to uh, cover fit in the, uh, the tart pan. And the thickness will probably be about a sixteenth to an eighth of an inch once we roll it out. Now I noticed that the, the edges of this this puff were kind of dried out, but I think we're going to be able to roll it out enough that it will fit in the pan.
Now, if you get some areas that get a little hole in them, just use a little bit of the puff and patch it, okay? And then you can roll it some more, although if it's gonna be at the bottom of the pan, you don't even really have to do that so much because nobody's ever gonna see it. Just roll out a little bit more here. And I think this should probably fit into our pan. Good, okay. Now what we're gonna do is try to peel this up carefully Put it into the pan. Now we have some uh, couple of holes in the middle here. What we're going to do is trim the um, the puff off of the edge, and then use that part that was on the edge to patch the bottom. Again, this, it's not crucial what it looks like. And I have to say, this is not one of my prettier puff jobs here. Um, but it doesn't really matter what it looks like because that's all gonna be down underneath, underneath the filling. Then what you want to do is take your knife and trim around the edges. There. We have a couple of other places where, it, where we have little holes. I'm just going to put a little patch there. Okay, good. Okay, now I just want to uh, fix this a little bit. I want to make sure that the dough is up to the edges of the pan here and uh, then what we want to do is just use the, the fork to prick the dough a bit. The idea here is that it will let air escape. Okay now what we want to do is take a piece of parchment and lay it down on the dough. Now the, the parchment should be bigger than your pan so that it overlaps a bit. And then what we want to do is add our pie weights, which are really dried beans, okay? So the idea here is that we are weighting down the puff so that it doesn't puff up too much, okay? It stays flat, pretty flat at least, on the bottom of the tart pan so that uh, it doesn't have big bubbles in it and so that the, um, the filling so that we can put the uh, spread the cheese on it after it's been blind baked. Okay, now, now what we're going to do is make sure that we have uh, the beans pressed into the into the corners. Good, good, and then we're going to blind bake this for uh, 30 minutes. Now, uh, blind baking again means exactly what we're doing here. We have the dough in the pan, we have parchment over it, and we have weights on top. It doesn't have a filling. That's blind baking. So we're going to put this into our oven, 375 degrees, for 30 minutes. Okay, here are our slices of uh, butternut squash, and they are nice and tender if you push uh, a uh, toothpick through them. Okay, now what we want to do is keep these warm until we're ready to finish assembling the tart. All right, here's our duck confit. It has been in the sous vide device for about um, almost nine hours, actually. And what we're going to do is open the bag, and we're going to take out the duck leg. Now, if this were being served as confit, what we would do now is we would put this in a pan and we would sear it and try to get that skin crispy. But that's not what we're doing. We are uh, going to be using just the meat and uh, the um, duck essence and the fat that uh, came out of there. Um, I don't throw too much away, so I'm going to save those. I'll probably use them in the All Your Ducks in a Row lesson, which is uh, lesson 99 through 105. 
Okay, now as soon as that duck leg is cool enough to get the fat, uh, the skin off, we're going to pull the skin away and any fat that's hanging around. All right. Still a little warm to the touch. Okay. All right, so we want to pull away that skin and fat. Then I want to pull the meat off the bones. All right. Now in the process of pulling it off, it's going to shred, which is fine uh, because I want it shredded. And in fact, if it's not uh, as shredded as I want it after I pull it off of here, I'm going to shred it a little more. These bones you should keep to make duck stock because if you don't already have duck stock, you're going to need it for lesson 99 through 105, which is all your ducks in a row. Okay, now let's take the larger chunks of this duck and shred it. What we're going to be doing is scattering this on the top of the uh, of the tart, right? So we want to have one, we want to have enough of it that we can scatter it over the whole top. And two, we want the pieces to be roughly the same size, not big chunks, uh, you know, just shreds basically. Now, after we finish shredding this, we want to keep this warm until we're finished um, until we're ready to um, assemble the uh, tart. Now here's a prime example of why we have prep lists. I forgot to say we need to adjust the seasoning at this point. So what we're going to do is take a little taste and I think the salt and pepper are uh, perfect. We don't need to add any. Uh, so what we're going to do is keep this warm until we're ready to plate. Okay, here is our tart that we've blind baked for a half an hour. You can see that the uh, the pie crust underneath is uh, getting brown around the edges. Now what we want to do is carefully remove these beans um, and so that we can bake it a little bit more. Now what I'm going to do at first is scoop some of these beans out with uh, with a spoon. They are very hot, so be careful. All right, and once we get enough of them out of there, we can lift out the parchment and uh, just pour the rest of them from the parchment. These beans can still be re be used, by the way. I'll just let them cool down, put them back in their container, and then when I'm ready to cook some beans, I'll use these beans. And only one of them escaped the parchment. Good. Now what we're going to do is we're going to put this back into the oven and bake it 10 more minutes. Now why, oh there's one more bean there. Why are we going to do that? Because um, when we were blind baking, some of the moisture was trapped underneath that parchment and the beans, okay? So by putting it back into the oven now, it's not going to rise because it's already baked some and the air has escaped. Uh, but it's going to uh, make this bottom of the crust a little bit um, more baked and crispy. So back into the oven, 10 minutes, blind baking without the weights. Okay, here's our crust that has been blind baked. You can see that the bottom of it is a bit more browned and baked, okay? Now what we're going to do is let this cool just enough that we can spread that uh, the uh, compound goat cheese in there now. If I start to spread it now, I think it's going to just get too soupy, okay? Because the uh, heat from the dough and from the pan will melt the cheese. So we're going to let it cool down a little bit and then we're going to fill it with the cheese. Okay, next thing we're going to do is spread the chev onto the uh, dough. And uh, we're going to use all of it. And uh, you might need a combination of the spreader and uh, a spoon. Whatever works better.
Okay, there we go. Now, you can use the cheese to make some repairs if any of your dough starts to break up. And uh, you may have noticed that um, I had a little trouble over in this area, but that's okay. We'll be able to cover it up with the, um, with the butternut squash. So what we're going to do is we're going to start laying these squash pieces out, starting in the center. And we want to overlap them enough that um, we don't have like a gap like this. We want to have kind of a nice, nice edge to it, okay, with all basically the same gaps around each one. And we're going to go through the whole tart like that. Now you might notice that I have a few pieces here that are a little bit browner. It's just the way they cooked, all right? So what I'm going to do is I am going to move a couple pieces around. You don't have to do this because you'll see in a moment that we're going to be covering uh, we're going to be covering this with the other ingredients. So they won't really be noticeable, but I don't really want them all along the same side, okay? Okay, next we want to scatter the duck on top. Then we want to scatter the prosciutto on top. Now I said at the beginning that we were going to saute this prosciutto. And I decided that I wasn't going to do that because we're going to be putting this back into the oven for about mm, five to ten minutes. And the prosciutto doesn't need to be cooked and it's beautiful the way it is. So this is an, an example of adapting as you go, okay? You do not have to stick to recipes. You do not have to do it the way that I did it. You can modify as you go along. And then we want to add the pine nuts. Then we want to sprinkle with a little parsley. Then a twist of pepper. Just a few grains of salt. Okay, then we're just gonna give it a little drizzle, just a little drizzle of olive oil. And then we're gonna put it back into the oven for about five minutes, we're gonna check it at that point. It might go for 10. Okay, hey, here's the finished tart. It was in the oven for about eight minutes. Um, and so this is the conclusion of Lesson 91, Butternut Squash and Duck Confit Tartine with Chev Prosciutto and Pine Nuts. Um, I would, what I will do now is I, you can, what, what you can do is you can either cut it inside of this tart pan and uh, then serve it like in a pie slice or you can remove it from the tart pan by lifting it up from the bottom carefully and then, whoop, don't let it slide around too much, then put it out like this and slice it, okay? So, uh, you can see photos of the final dish on my Instagram, which is at Chef's Apprentice, cook like a pro. Next up is oysters on rice and ice. Please remember to subscribe to my channel and thanks for watching.